if you've got an E90 series M3, chances are it's probably a lot nicer than mine. And also chances are it's probably not covered in yellow overspray. And it also probably doesn't have the world's nastiest, most rusty and rigged together exhaust. But hey, this car was cheap for a reason. If it was expensive, it wouldn't be on the channel and I wouldn't be rebuilding it. So where would the fun be in that? But today the car gets a whole new exhaust and it's one of the coolest exhausts I've ever installed. But first let's test out the old exhaust, which essentially they cut off the muffler, grab some piping from AutoZone and put it together with a stick welder they got from Harbor Freight. And at least it sounds kind of cool, even though it's obnoxiously loud. They are right what they say about these cars. They have no torque at all. Also, does this thing have a verbal tune or is this just how they all sound if they're straight piped? Yeah, I can't really hear anything when I'm in here. It's freaking loud. What it's really missing now is just a bearable exhaust that's not completely rusted out. We're going to fix that right now. I'm super pumped with this. This is the first ever valve exhaust I've ever installed. It's from Turner Motorsport. It comes with key fobs and you can see the valves in it, which essentially make it almost straight pipe like it is now, but then you hit a button and it's nice and at least toned down somewhat with this nice big stainless steel center muffler. It comes with everything you need to install it, including four brand new, beautiful chrome exhaust tips. There's a lot of work in front of me. Let me get the car in the garage and up on the quick jacks and show you, well, just how bad the old exhaust is because it is awful. Kind of sounds cool, but it looks awful. I know what you're thinking, Matt, how can you possibly let the car sit like this? It's covered in yellow dust and paint and the brakes look so good because they're brand new and the wheels look awful. Well, uh, yeah, you're totally right. I'll fix that in just a second. All right, now working with a clean car. Let's take the old exhaust off, put the new beautiful exhaust on there. This video is brought to you by FlexiSpot and their E7 Plus Premium Standing Desk. And before you click out of this ad, there is an Easter egg hidden on top of the desk. That's not really hidden, it's in plain view. So you might want to stick around and check it out. And they don't just make motorized desks that move up and down at the push of a button. They make other cool accessories like, well, this light on the wall behind me, this really freaking comfy chair, mats for the floor, and other desk accessories like things to help you organize all your power cords and things like that. This thing is incredibly robust. I mean, I'm not a light dude, and this is picking me up like it's nothing. Sort of like having your own elevator. Now, if you're looking to get a new desk, FlexiSpot is the way to go. It takes about half an hour to put together. The instructions are good, and you don't need any specialty tools. 
Now for the chair, this is their FlexiSpot C7. It actually has a footrest and is actually a lot like a recliner, not just an office desk chair. FlexiSpot simply makes the coolest high quality motorized desks. I mean, what other desk is gonna be able to lift a 210 pound 15 year old kid up like this? Yeah, we're, we're pretty high up here. Now if you guys would like to get anything that you see here from FlexiSpot or any of their other awesome products, I'll have links in the description box. All right, I'm gonna go back down. Huge thanks to FlexiSpot for sponsoring this video and sending me all these cool office accessories. Let's get back to the video. Well, it's nice is since I raised the car up, I can get the quick jacks right under it without using an additional jack. For a quick cleanup, this car doesn't look too terrible, until you get up close, that is. But what does look good up close is this new exhaust. I'm really excited to get it on. Between that and these new brakes, it's going to make the car look, drive, and feel just way better. But the first step is to get that old crappy exhaust off there, which, for all I know, is rusted on there completely tight. This Turner Motorsport stainless steel valve exhaust looks really, really nice. I'm really excited to get it installed. But first, well, let me show you the old exhaust, because it is, well, it's even worse than you think. To be perfectly honest, based on the condition of the rest of this car, I expected this exhaust to be bad, but I didn't think it would be this bad. This looks horrible, and it was close to being completely rusted through and just falling off on the ground. Does anyone want a custom exhaust? Yep, that's as awful as you would expect, but at least it came out really, really easily. And I'm hoping the install of this new kit will be, well, just as easy as the removal of the old rusty kit exhaust. So just snooping around down here, I was just feeling out some things and uh, there's a bolt right here for the front of the diff. And I can spin it. Yeah, that's, that's not ideal. That would explain one of the clunks I was getting. Well, there's your problem. The bolt was sheared off in there. Shocking, I know. At some point, somebody did differential bushings on this car and obviously didn't do them correctly. So that's another thing to fix. But that's all right, it should stop the clunking. One new bolt and one new nut later, it's fixed.
exhaust is fully installed and looks amazing. I can't wait to hear it. Technically, I could start it off right now, but I told myself I wouldn't. I wait until it's fully installed and finished. So I need to do all of the plumbing and electronic work to make the valves work. And there's a pretty cool trick you can do to make them work without the included key fobs if you don't want to use them. So I got a good many parts in front of me, a couple sets of vacuum lines, longer one, which runs all the way from, well, basically the exhaust all the way up to wherever I put the solenoid. And then the solenoid has to go to this box. It's a, it's a decent amount of work. So I'm just gonna stop talking about it. And I'm just gonna do it so I can get it done and get this thing fired up. me guys I'll show you everything underneath because it's uh it's done so we come off of each actuator I have two little zip ties and the heat shields to keep that nice and tight and then it runs up and over the subframe and then ties in with mm -hmm. the other brake lines and associated things there runs back along there in with those just follows right under here don't mind that the previous owner and then it runs up inside there and well you you can't see it from there but overall very happy with everything under here this is finished now i get to work on everything up top i also need to put some screws in here they weren't there even by the previous owner <laughs> shocking So I showed you everything underneath. Let me show you everything in the engine bay. I have the actuator. I believe that's what it's called right here. I have both vacuum lines. I have it bolted in through the factory hood hinge. I still have to run the wires for that, which isn't a big deal. Both vacuum lines are run up here, zip tied in. They run through this factory plastic grommet piece, which I drilled two holes in. And then I did a T off the brake booster line. Different than how they want to do it because I didn't want to have to pull the whole intake manifold off if I didn't have to. I think this is a pretty clean and easy way to do it. And then you guys saw this vacuum line runs down here, zip tied and up out of the way of any exhaust manifolds. That should all be good to go. This side is good other than putting everything back together and running that one wire. Now on the driver's side, I found the perfect little cubby for the module. I just double-sided taped it right there between these two spots. It fits there really nicely. I ran the wire in through here in this factory grommet. And when I put this cover back on, you won't see it at all. And I have a nice juicy power and ground that's switched on right here, the inline fuse holder. So tuck the grommet back in there. And now we should be good for a test once I plug this wire in. All right, let's give it a test. All right now it shouldn't do anything because there shouldn't be any power going to it. So if you listen, yep. I hear it switching every time. Perfect. All I have to do now is button everything up under here, clean it up, make it all look OEM, and then we can actually start this thing. I'm really excited. Guys, I'm really excited to start this thing up. I'm not going to lie to you, I haven't started it at all yet, but I'm very happy with the install. You can't see anything up here except for the little cubby where that solenoid is, and I think that's probably good. That way, if there's ever a problem, I have like easy access to diagnose it. But I'm gonna get it down off the quick jacks and fire this thing up. A couple things of note I forgot to mention. I broke coolant overflow line 
when I was thinking about taking the intake manifold off, I wanted to get that line out of the way so I could get access to more bolts and well, it, it just simply snapped. So I, I don't know how long it can actually run the car if it's gonna start pouring out coolant immediately. Obviously, that's not gonna work. You can see I had it, I had the tab pulled up to be able to pull it off, but it just, shink, gone. But I should be able to get it started in at least, you know, get some sound clips, but that part comes in tomorrow, so don't worry. It'll be installed in like the next 30 seconds for you guys and we can get a full drive and review. And one other thing, if you notice in some of the B-roll, I'm missing some exhaust mounts, two exhaust mounts, and one of the rubber bushings is completely blown out. Those are on order as well, but for now the exhaust is still super tight and strong in there. I'm not concerned about it, at least for a short test drive. get a fresh look with it on the ground. Oh man, that looks so sweet. And you can even see it like the little holes in the bumper grill. That's awesome. All right, first start, here we go. All right, let's try it out. Oh yeah. <laughs> this is so cool. This is freaking amazing. Obviously, I don't want to spew coolant everywhere, so that's just a little tease. I'll wait till tomorrow where I get the new coolant line, we can go for a drive. So far, I absolutely love it. One of the absolute coolest features of this whole system, you can program HomeLink to actually open and close your exhaust. So I'm not a huge fan of having key fobs. I'd rather have like a button you can press at any time. So this is gonna solve that issue. I just gotta look up how to do it. First and third buttons. Took me longer than I'd like, but I eventually figured out how to program two buttons on this thing. I just took a little bit of finagling and learning, but it works. For now, you might be able to hear the click. This should be closed. I put the microphone up by the solenoid. That is so freaking cool. I want to put a valved exhaust on well, all my cars now, but can't wait till tomorrow. We can go for the first drive. It's going to be awesome. Well, that's really tight in there, isn't it? I mean, it's covered in goo. Oh, and that actually broke off in there too. Wow. Coolant line fixed, time for a drive. Weather is absolutely atrocious, but I gotta, I gotta drive this thing, I gotta test it out. But first, let me actually just fire it up and make sure that this new coolant hose doesn't leak. All looks good to me. Oh, it's just, it's just like a nice quiet car now in here. But it still has some tone. Like you still know it's a V8. I can say guys, it is now a nice comfortable car in here. Yet when you get on it with the valves open, it sounds basically the same that it did before. This is a huge win. This is like, uh, this is perfect. This is the absolute perfect exhaust. I love it. And hey, that rear end clunking is gone. So that's another win.